all right now let's look at the process builder right so with process builder you get a fancy flowchart kind of uh, uh, flow wherein you can take multiple uh, business decisions and uh, create a single builder that will take care of all your automations right so when i click on the new button this asks for asks for giving us a name on the process builder and here i'll just say covid count processes all right and then it asks whether you want to start this process when the record changes some event is invoked or it is invoked by another process so the second and the third one are more uh, development oriented but the first one is record changes which is nothing but you know whenever you create a record or edit a record right so that's the first one so let's select the record changes and let's click on save so now as you see you see a good flowchart kind of implementation and uh, configuration uh, not implementation rather uh, and if you see the the look and feel of the workflow is a bit tacky and uh, traditional conventional but this is a more more of a flowchart kind of a visual representation wherein you can see that you have some notes and you can based on some criteria you can take some decisions right so you have a good uh, start stop add object and everything is uh, uh, configured very well to support admin uh, to create uh, automation rules you know very easily so we'll start with the first box right here that says you know you need to add an object so a process builder has to be associated to an object now once i click on the object you see that i get a drop down wherein i can select the covid count object here right and then it asks whether you want to start this process when a record is created or it is created or edited similar to the workflow rules right you want to define the entry criteria so I'll just go ahead and say only when the record is created. But before doing all of this, let's let's uh, discuss a use case. So what are we trying to achieve in terms of automation here, right? So our use cases, if I go back to our COVID count record, and if you see, we have a checkbox that we have merely used in our entire training uh, session. So is recovered greater than deceased is a checkbox that should be set to true every time the number of recovered cases are greater than the deceased cases. Make sense so whenever the recovered cases are greater than deceased cases this should automatically be checked to true right we don't want user to check it so we can just keep this field as read only and we can automate it in the back end so how do we automate it we could either use workflow rules that we have just learned or we could use process builders that we'll be understanding now so this is our use case okay so when would you want your uh, process builder to execute whether only when the record is created or it is created or edited the second one right because when you have a record already you might want to change the number of recovered cases if in that case your number of recovered cases are less than the deceased cases you might want to you know uncheck this box also right so both for creation and updations we'll want to start this process so i'll just click on this one here and i'll click on save right so now our object is defined and we have a starting criteria here now you need to add a criteria now what should be your entry rule so i'll just say So I'll name this is great recovered greater than deceased, right? So I want to know whether the number of recovered cases are greater than deceased. Only in that case, I want to do some kind of immediate actions, right? So the criteria goes here and the immediate actions go here. Once the condition evaluates to true, if it is false, you go to the next uh, node or you can directly say stop. Okay. So in this case, you have three options, right? In workflow rule, when you did not have a criteria, you had to, you know, go to formula evaluates to true and mention true here, right? But here, if you want to do something that has to be executed irrespective of any criteria, you can just select this option right here. Okay, so that's an enhancement we have on the process build. And now let's go for the conditions are met. What is our condition? Our condition is the recovered cases should be greater than or equal to i'll say greater than actually not greater than equal to i'll say greater than and here you have three options whether you want to evaluate with a it with a number let's see if i wanted something like fifteen thousand, i could do that okay but here i want to compare this with some other field right so that comes under field reference okay once i select field reference you'll see that this lookup option lets you select another field so if i just type in deceased you'll get the total deceased cases pretty cool right so now how does this uh, read in english this says the total recovered cases should be greater than the total deceased cases if this condition is met now here you have the filter logic all any or you can customize just like workflow rules right but we want to say all the conditions we have we just have one condition and that should be met for this particular uh, criteria to be evaluated and i'll click on save okay so now our criteria is defined and it says whenever the record is greater than deceased what do we want to do we want to do some kind of immediate action right now if i click on the add action you'll see that unlike workflow rules process builders are pretty much powerful right you can call apex that's its custom development you can create a new record 
instead of you know you had only updating records on the workflow side here you can create new records okay you can update records you can send out some notifications you can submit a record for approval you can send out email alerts so a lot of actions can be done through process builders that's why it, it's pretty much and it's, it's more powerful and it is more, more sought after right so in our case what do we want to do we want to update the checkbox field to true right so in that case we'll go for the update record option okay i'll just name it update checkbox to true now here it asks for the record to update what record do you want to update do you want to update the same record that started your process or you do you want to re, uh, uh, update a record that's related to COVID count so you see that's another enhancement you get with process builders you can also update related objects right there's no ex exception or limitations you can uh, create new objects you can update your existing object or you can update objects that are related to your object right but in our case we want to update the same object that started our process i'll just choose this and here i'll just say no criteria and i'll just set the field of the is recovered greater than deceased as true and i'll click on save right looks neat right so let's revisit what we did we created a process builder that's named covid count processes then we started off our first node and we defined what object is the concerned object here. We said that we want to start this process every time a record is created or edited. Then we defined the first criteria. This is our use case wherein every time the recovered cases are greater than the deceased cases, we want the checkbox to be set to true automatically. Okay. If you wanted to have some more actions, you could click on this add action and you can pipeline all your actions here, right? So based on one criteria, you could have multiple actions. Okay. And if this condition is not evaluated to true, it goes to false and here it, it just stops. There's no more criteria here, right? So you can just say stop here. Okay. So, so far so good. Let's try to activate this. So once you're good with your process builder, you can click on activate and this will be activated. Right. Once it is activated, you cannot make changes. You see, everything will be read only. If you have to make changes, you have to deactivate it or you have to actually clone it and create a new process altogether. And then you can uh, make your changes. Okay, but since we have activated it, let's see this in action. Let's go back to our record and now let's try to say deceased cases are 5600 and the recovered cases are 10900. Should the checkbox be set to true? I believe so. Let's click on save. So you see the checkbox is automatically being checked to true. And alongside that, your workflow rules are, are also firing as is. They are also not impacted, right? So all of this goes hand in hand. Now, but what if I did something like 5600 is changed to, let's say, 26600. Now, here, deceased cases are greater than recovered cases. This should be changed to false, right? Let's click on save. So, it's not changing to false. Why? Because we have not defined that node here. The only criteria we are checking is, we just we are just checking whether it is greater than uh, the deceased cases. What about the less than condition? In that case, we want to update the checkbox to false, right? So, let's now make that change. Now, as you see, once you have the process builder activated, you cannot make changes. If any new enhancements come up, you have to clone your existing process builder and you can either create a version of it or you can create a new process altogether. All right. So I'll just create a new version. I'll click on save and the same process builder opens up and now it is on the editable mode. Right. So this is my first condition that says is recovered greater than deceased. I want to create one more condition and I'll just say is recovered less than deceased right in this case what should be my criteria my criteria should be is recovered less than or equal to because we have taken the greater than condition there right i'll just say the failed reference and i'll use deceased i'll click on choose and i'll click on save now if this criteria is met what do i want to do i want to update the record and i want to update the same checkbox value right update the checkbox to false What record should be selected? The same record that started our process. Click on choose. Set the new value for is recovered as false and click on save. Right. So now you have two nodes here. Okay. And if you see if I if I hover over a node, it's it's getting highlighted. Why? Because you have another facility here. If you want to position or you know sequence your uh, nodes, you can just click on it and drag and drop them as as you wish. Right. So this flowchart is very very handy and it's it's a very uh, powerful in terms of you know switching or you know uh, swapping your uh, criteria nodes you can have multiple actions on a single criteria and you don't have to write multiple workflow rules like you have like you were writing for workflow rules right so you have to write one workflow rule for each entry criteria but here if you have different use cases you can easily pipeline them 
here in a sequence because it's following a flowchart kind of a, a representation okay so now that we have two nodes here now let's do something let's go ahead and click on activate and let's confirm this so now that this is this is activated let's go back and see if the boolean flag is getting checked and unchecked based on how it's supposed to be so now disease is greater than recovered if i click on save so you see the checkbox is false what about i change the recovered cases now i change this to a pretty big number let's click on save so it's getting checked as true right so now both your nodes are working per perfectly fine okay there's one more interesting thing to note is if this particular criteria evaluates to to true you execute this particular immediate action right what happens after this you have this node here that says stop which means irrespective of anything that's down below this will be stopped here and nothing will be executed but what about if you have multiple use cases let's say you have one more use case wherein you're checking some other requirement uh, criteria and you want to do some action based on that in that case you'd want to e evaluate the next criteria right you don't want to stop the process then and there so if this evaluates to true irrespective of that you want to go to the next criteria you can just change this to from stop to evaluate the next criteria currently it's read only why because i have activated it so now what do i need to do i'll just click on clone i'll just say save and i'll just change this to evaluate the next criteria and click on save all right so now what will happen is if you have something else apart from these two conditions that needs to be executed you can that will be evaluated even though if it is true or false right so the flow chart will will reach that particular node just to ensure that all your business use cases are met right and the last node can have the stop because there's nothing after that right so let me just go ahead and activate it so in this particular scenario what will happen is recovered greater than deceased so we know that a, one of these will only be executed at once right because this condition and these conditions are mutually exclusive right so if this happens even though the criteria goes to this node this will this will be evaluated to false and it will reach to the end of the node right so we don't have to worry about uh, evaluating the next criteria okay and the stop would have also worked fine but evaluating the next criteria is, comes in handy when you have different use cases this is just one use case right so if you look at some other use case which we'll be looking at just after this uh, section that's when this evaluation comes into picture and helps you all right so now once i've activated it i would also want to show you guys is if you go to view all processes here you'll see that you have this one process builder created but under this you have multiple versions right so we cloned it two times right so those two times a new version was created now process builders also help in version control so how does this come in come uh, in handy or you know helps you keeping track this this help, helps in auditing so let's say that there's a pro project that started off and you created this covid count process builder right the release happened and the project went live after six months the client came back with an enhancement and they wanted to make some changes so when you activate the new one the previous one gets deactivated if you see right here the pro status is inactive and the latest one is activated right so this helps you keep track of what changes did you make at what particular timestamp and what were the changes you made right so this helps in auditing and version control